Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. My name is Sava and today we are starting a brand new series of videos on simple statistical tests that you can use to detect any patterns or interrelations in the data that you've collected for your research or any other purposes. And obviously it's pretty clear how to seek for those patterns or relationships in purely quantitative data. Well, you could do some regression analysis or whatnot, but it's much less obvious what to do with categorical variables. For example, you might have an instance where the variables you've collected, the data you have, is not clearly expressible in terms of numbers or clear numerical values. The data that you analyze or the data that you've collected might be categorical or in any other cases qualitative. So there exist a lot of other tests that you could use to test for significance of various relationships or patterns that you might suspect exist in your data. And perhaps one of the most famous such tests is the chi-squared test that allows you to test for interrelations between categorical variables. And uh, it's arguably uh, easiest to wrap your head around and learn the chi-square test on some simple made-up example, such as the one we're going to cover right now. Imagine that you've surveyed a hundred people coming from three large English cities, London, Manchester and Birmingham, and asked them one simple question. What is your favorite food? And uh, they gave you four potential responses. They either prefer pizza, curry, steak, or burgers. And there is some distribution of these answers according to the three cities the respondents come from. And your raw input is precisely that. It's just a table that lists all 100 of your initial respondents, uh, signifying what, what is their home city and what is their favorite food. So one of the easy and initial ways to make the presentation of the data more visually appealing is to arrange this data into something that's called a crosstab. A crosstab is just uh, a table that presents how many observations fall within each of the potential subcategories and uh, it illustrates the entire empirical distribution of those two variables across your sample. So in our case, we just need to count how many uh, respondents from each of the three cities chose each of the four potential items as their favorite food. To do so, we can simply apply the count ifs function from Excel. The count ifs function just counts the number of entries that satisfy simultaneously a set of predefined criteria. In our case, there would be two criteria that have to be satisfied simultaneously for us to successfully count this individual into each of those groups. So to do that, we'll just need to apply the count ifs function. And uh, first of all, in each of these cells, we need to count all respondents that come from a particular city and that have chosen a particular item as their favorite food. So first of all, here we need to select only those that come from London. So we select this array of home cities, lock that, and specify London as their home city. And here we need to lock the column, but not the row, as we want the home city to change as we drag the formula up and down and we don't want it to change as we drag the formula left to right. Then we need to specify that in this case, their favorite food that they named should be pizza. So we need to select the array with favorite food responses and lock it through and through. And then we need to select pizza as the criterion here. And here we need to lock the row and not the column because we don't want it to change as we drag it up and down, but we do want to change it as we drag it left to right. And then we just close the brackets, press enter, 
and we can see that there are seven people from London that prefer pizza. And the logic of this formula will allow us just to drag it left to right and up to down. And we'll see that the total sum of respondents across all of those 12 categories is precisely 100. And that's good news, we haven't let anyone out. Now we can just count the subtotals and the grand total. So here we just need to sum all the pizza lovers from all three cities. And dragging that from left to right will give us the total number of the lovers of each of those four types of food from all cities, from the whole sample of ours. And here we can just count or sum all people that come from uh, a particular city, regardless of what food they prefer. And then the grand total will be 100. Well, obviously, to detect whether the favorite food depends on the home city of our respondents, we need to first of all establish what would we have expected if there was no relationship between home city and favorite food whatsoever. And that's a key concept in mathematical statistics and hypothesis testing. If you want to test whether there is a relationship, you also need first to specify what would you have expected to see if there was no relationship in the first place. If there was no relationship in the first place, well, you would have expected the number of pizza lovers, for example, from London, or the proportion of pizza lovers that come from London to be the same as the proportion of pizza lovers from every single other city. So we would just uh, pose as our null hypothesis as something that we would expect to see if no relationship indeed is present as our expected number of observations, our expected count of uh, respondents from each of the cities that love each of those four types of food. So here, in our case, what should we do? Well, uh, we should select the total number of people who come from London, and we need to lock the column over here as we don't want it to change as we drag it uh, left to right, but we want to change it as we drag it up or down to reflect the total number of people that come from other cities, and then adjust it for the total proportion of pizza lovers in our sample. So we can just multiply it by the total number of pizza lovers, and we lock the row here, as we don't want it to change as we drag it up to down, but we want to, it to change as we, as we drag it left to right, and then divide it by the total number of observations, the total sample size, and here the logic is exactly what I told you earlier. We assume that the proportion of pizza lovers in London is exactly the same as the proportion of pizza lovers across the whole sample and across every single other city. So we can enforce this formula and drag it around and see how many lovers of every single food type should we expect to come from every single city if there is no relationship, no dependency between home city and favorite food. And now we can also count the subtotals and the totals. So just copying the formulas around will do. And now we can finally apply the logic of the chi-squared test to calculate our chi-squared stat and then use it for our ultimate hypothesis testing. Well, we already have the actual uh, number of respondents that fall within each of those 12 categories and uh, the baseline scenario, something that we would expect to happen if there was no relationship. And bear in mind, there are some uh, fractions over here that shouldn't bother you much, uh, as we know that there can be only a whole number of respondents, but that is just some hypothetical case and it needn't be uh, really feasible in uh, reality. So here we need to apply the following logic. The further away our real world observation deviates from the expected scenario, the more likely we are to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. That is, we need to concede that there is indeed a relationship and our presumption that there was no relationship whatsoever 
uh, does not stand against the data. So how to express it mathematically? Well, the chi-squared stat formula uh, does precisely that. What it does is that it sums over all the rows and columns, so both categories, and uh, it divides the squared deviation of the observed value from the expected value, dividing it by the expected value. So we can calculate this expression for each of the 12 categories and then sum over all of them. So here we'll just need to subtract from the observed value of pizza lovers from London, the expected number of pizza lovers from London, square that and divide by the expected value. And then we can drag this formula all the way through and as given by the formula, we'll just need to sum all of those values to get our final chi squared stat. And this statistic uh, allows us to perform hypothesis testing directly. Given this statistic and the properties of our initial sample, we can calculate the probability with which the deviation from the expected scenario that we saw in our real data occurred due to random chance. And that is all there is for hypothesis testing. You compare your outcome with the expected outcome given no relationship, and then you can assign a probability of such scenario to occur due to random chance alone. And that is going to be the probability of a type 1 error. The likelihood that you would have assumed that there is a relationship where in fact the deviation was completely random. And that is why you talk about confidence intervals and you talk about results being significant on 5%, 1%, 0.1% and so on and so forth. To uh, move from the chi-squared stat to the p-value, which is again the crucial indicator of the significance of the relationship, we also need to understand what stands for degrees of freedom in the chi-squared distribution. Well, this uh, expression follows a chi-squared distribution with the number of degrees of freedom that's equal to the number of columns minus one times the number of rows minus one. Why is that? Why minus one? Well, first of all, the multiplication uh, stands for the fact that um, the total amount of categories that you observe depends on the product of the two numbers, of the number of rows and number of columns. That is obvious. But why minus one? Well, minus one stands for the fact that if you had just one possible outcome in each of those two variables, then the result would be meaningless as you would have no variation whatsoever. Imagine everyone coming from London. Well, then you wouldn't possibly be able to determine whether the favorite food depends on the city because, well, you just have one city. Uh, likewise, if you just have one type of a favorite food, then no reasoning could be carried out whatsoever as well. So that's why it's minus one here and minus one here. So in our case, the number of degrees of freedom would be three minus one times four minus one. Bearing that in mind, we can apply the chi squared right tailed distribution. Um, as our x will put our chi squared stat, and as the number of degrees of freedom, we can input the number of rows minus one, so three minus one, times the number of columns minus one, so four minus one, as we have three cities and four types of favorite food. And that's all we need. As we press enter, we'll see that our p-value is slightly below 50%. So it's roughly um, a 50% chance that uh, this deviation from the expected values is due to random chance and that's not by any means sufficient to declare this relationship as significant. So given that data we need to conclude that the relationship between the home city and favorite food of our respondents is totally random. So there is no pattern between uh, which city someone comes from and what food do they prefer. And again, that's something you might have guessed uh, ultimately before even we started any hypothesis testing whatsoever. 
But what happens if we meddle with the data and assume that some weird instance would occur? And for example, all pizza lovers from London would then jump to preferring steak instead. So in this case, we'll have zero pizza lovers and 12 plus 7, 19 steak lovers. In that case, our chi-squared stat would increase to reflect that. So the higher the chi-squared stat is, the larger is the deviation from the expected outcome. And our p-value would change accordingly. Our p-value would decrease, suggesting that this deviation is much less likely to occur randomly. And perhaps in this case, uh, it's very unlikely that there is no relationship between home city and favorite food. But again, to do that, we have to undertake some pretty significant manipulations with the data in the first place. And that's all there is for the chi-squared test and how to use it to detect dependencies and interrelations between categorical, non-quantifiable variables. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I would be delighted to see any further suggestions for any topics in business, economics or finance you would like me to investigate in future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and stay tuned.